Music and candlelights pierce the night as family and friends celebrate a woman who was supposed to turn 52 years old today. It was going on seven weeks and I wanted her home to bury her. So it was bittersweet. I'm so sorry that I have lost my sister, but I'm so glad that I can bury her. Schultz went missing in early September. Her body was found on Wednesday off Beldor Road in Rockingham County. Janetta Crawford is her sister and says Joy always made people smile. Very intelligent woman and uh, very smart, loved to laugh and loved to make people laugh. It was kind of nerve-wracking because I couldn't believe it at first. Fred Woodard was friends with Joy and used to work with her. He says she was always there for him when he needed help. Very kind, joyful person to be around and to talk to. Uh, she would help just about anybody who would need help. And I know she's smiling, saying, don't worry about me. As night falls and the candles get brighter, Crawford wants everyone here to remember to keep their loved ones close, because you'll never know when they could be taken away. Don't worry about me. In Shenandoah, Kyrie Stewart, WHSV. There are people my age that could be frightened. Hello? Marjorie Christensen loves to talk to her daughters on the phone. I hear another call. I guess that's Susan. But she never thought someone would use the phone to try and scam her. On Monday, someone called her from a number she didn't know. They said they were from the IRS. And unless I called this number, there was going to be a lawsuit. Christensen knew she didn't owe money to the IRS and hung up the phone. That was the first time she got a call like that. But it wasn't the last time they tried to get her. The very next day, she said she got two more calls from the very same people, and on both of them, she hung up. To me, it bordered almost on a harassment that I'm going to keep calling you until you call this number, and who knows what they wanted to ask me if I called. Luckily, she saved the number, and I gave them a call and got voicemail. Person you are trying to reach Christensen hopes people don't fall for the scam. I hate to see someone taken advantage of, and I feel that, that there are people that succumb to this scam. And just hang up the phone if you don't know who's calling. In Harrisonburg, Kyrie Stewart, WHSV. I would hate to see anybody else taken like this. It's going to be our dream house where we're going to retire. The door to that dream was closed after Chuck Richardson and his wife say they gave this man, 48-year-old David Scott Campbell, $75,000 to build a home on this lot. Richardson tried to get their money back after months went by and no construction started. When that didn't work, they filed a police report. That uh, makes me feel horrible. Uh, we were all excited. The neighbors were already doing introductions when they just thought that we were going to be neighbors and never happened. Campbell is being charged with one count of construction fraud in both Augusta County and Waynesboro for separate incidents. Likely a bad contractor has wronged some people in the past, and that's the kind of word of mouth you want to be looking for. Brian Edwards with Waynesboro Police says there are several things you want to do before you contract someone to build a house. You really want to do take a lot of time and extensively research the person that you have put all your trust into. Richardson says he still plans to build his dream house and he's hoping to get his money back, but he wants to warn others so we don't become victims. Get referrals, uh, just, and if it seems to be too good to be true, it probably is. Something he's trying to cement in everyone's mind. In Augusta County, Kyrie Stewart, WHSB. Friends of 22-year-old Stephen Brooks were shocked to hear the news of Saturday night's car crash. They say he was a good man that was taken from them too soon. Last thing he said to me was that he loved me and he'd be back. I love him so much. I miss him so much. And I wish I could just hold him one more time.
funny person. He was outgoing. He loved to make people laugh and smile. Even when he was upset, he was still smiling. Friendly, funny. He always joked around. I don't want him to be gone. You don't know when you're going to see somebody for the last time. Last thing I said to him was, I'll see you later. Don't take people for granted. And then always hug and love the people because you never know when they're not going to be around again. It's hard to describe because it was so loud. I was saying, oh my gosh, what was that? Dorothy Becks will never forget what happened to her house on Monday afternoon. I was in my bedroom watching television and all of a sudden I heard this loud bang. That loud bang was a 1984 GMC pickup truck in her kitchen. My whole dining room, walls and everything, windows was hanging, table down the steps. That truck was driven by her neighbor, who says his brakes gave way as he was backing down this hill on Royal Street in Stanton. After the crash, Beck says he and others helped her out of the house. The guys came in, my neighbors came in to check on me, see that I was, you know, and help me to get out. Francis Battle lives right across the street from Beck's and saw everything. I just run screaming, hollering, you know, my neighbor, my neighbor. I heard all kinds of far trucks, ambulances, rescue squads. Sylvia Spencer lives right down the street and ran to Beck's house after she heard what happened. After I could hug her and ask her was she okay, it was all right. Luckily, no one was physically hurt and many here say that there are no hard feelings towards the driver. He didn't mean to do it. He really hurt behind it. But Beck says she's lucky to be surrounded by people who love her. When you have bad tragedies, that's when you know when people really care. And she plans to come back once the house is rebuilt. In Stanton, Kyrie. How are people reacting to this news? I'm on Lois Lane, and if you look behind me, this is the building that the shooting happened at earlier today. Now, many people who live here say that a crime like this is unusual, and it has them a bit worried. It's very scary. <laughs> very scary because it's so close to home. It could happen to anybody. Emily Lodato's apartment is close to where the shooting happened. Police say a man was shot here in his lower body. A half mile away, police responded to a home invasion at the Hunters Ridge Apartments off Hunters Road. It's pretty scary because, like, I mean, we're all college students here and we're just trying to, you know, just, you know, be safe. But if, like, people are coming in robbing us, we don't feel safe at all. William Cruz has a friend who lives in the building where the home invasion happened. He says this will make him think twice about his surroundings when he gets home. Makes me unsure, makes me lock my door every time I enter in my house. Usually, like, sometimes we forget to lock our doors. Lodato says she plans to be more careful the next time she leaves her apartment and hopes you do the same. You make sure that you're staying with people and not walking by yourself and making sure your doors are locked and you're very careful about where you're putting everything, locking your car, stuff like that, and, like, always staying with people. So you don't end up being a victim. Now, police are still trying to find out whether the two incidents are related, and they're still working on a description of the suspects. So stay with WHSV on air and online for updates. Live in Harrisonburg, Kyrie Stewart, WHSV. Stacy Bridge likes to talk. So I have an interview on Thursday. And talk. So what are you doing next weekend? And talk. <laughs> but she says that she's run into a lot of problems when it comes to getting service. Depending on where I'm at, I don't get service. I've had a lot of drop calls. That's why she's happy to hear that Verizon may be building a new cell phone tower on the campus of Waynesboro High School. If built, the tower could help improve cell phone service in the area. The company already has two towers in the city, and at least some people wondering if a third tower is really needed. I really don't see the need for it, and I've never had a problem with Verizon's service at all. Abby Rupp lives right across the street from Waynesboro High School. She says she thinks it won't improve or hurt her phone service, but it's just an eyesore pretty much. Either way, Bridge supports the idea and hopes the move will give her more bang for her buck. I'm hoping better service, less drop calls. So she can keep walking and talking. In Waynesboro, Kyrie Stewart, WHSB.